So hello, everyone. Uh, this is actually my first time attending All Things Open, either as an attendee or as a speaker. Uh, so I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I'm joining tonight from frigid Sweden, where the sun set several hours ago, and uh, it's hovering around freezing. But hey, at least I didn't have to get any jet lag uh, to talk to you all today. So today I'm going to talk about my experiences with building products and building open source strategies. So first, let's talk about products. It's really easy when you're building products to narrow your thinking to thinking about your product and your users in a vacuum and not thinking about anything else. But your product, your platform, your company, your engineers, and even you and me, we all exist together in an ecosystem of developers and technologies. For this talk, I'm going to be calling that the developer ecosystem. The developer ecosystem is a vibrant interconnected system of different programming languages, niche communities, open source projects, platforms and services. And the different parts of this ecosystem, much like a biological ecosystem, depend on each other to thrive. The products and tech that I'm using to talk to you right now would not be possible without this thriving developer ecosystem. Within this vast ecosystem, your product or your tech is probably not unique or special. There's probably many others doing the same thing. But your relationships with the community and how the connections that you have to other projects, developers, and organizations, those could be. So in this talk, I'll tell you about my company's approach to open source and why you should consider taking your product development from outside of the developer ecosystem into the greater developer ecosystem. Speaking of, that little dot on the developer ecosystem is me. My name is Ari, and I'm a developer advocate by day and a D&D &D and video game nerd by night. I've been programming for around seven years, but for the last few years, I've been focused on developer relations and product management for platforms and products that are targeted toward developers. Right now, I'm working at Embark Studios. Embark is a Stockholm-based game studio. We're making a pretty cool game, which you can see some of my colleagues testing here. But our long-term mission is to blur the line between playing and making. To do that, we're building tools that enable everyone to create games. But we haven't released any of that yet. What we are known for right now is our support of the Rust programming language and its open source community. And for being pioneers for Rust, open source, and game dev. And I'll get to that later. These are just a few of the Rust open source projects that we've released already, ranging from physics to dependency management. Last year, we became gold level sponsors of the Blender Foundation, a free and open source 3D modeling software, which we also got the entire studio switched over to use. We also hired two engineers to work full time on open source projects, and we support many others through monthly sponsorships. All of this work is the result of our decision to build an open source strategy early on before releasing any products to the world. This may seem a little bit backwards, especially to someone like me who works in developer relations, usually with finished products, but we have an amb ambitious vision to change how games are built. And we think the only way to get there is to start with a strong open source strategy. We simply can't do this on our own. As an example, after we started with an empty hard drive in late 2018, our projects have already grown to depend on over 500 different open source projects. I'll get back to Embark later. First, let's talk about products. So in your typical early product teams, you're gonna focus on hiring product, engineering, and design folks to get a first version of your product out to market as quickly as possible. But I mentioned I work in developer relations, so let's look at how that usually fits in. Developer relations, or DevRel, usually acts as an interface or a communication line between your company and the community. And here I am vastly oversimplifying what community means, but that is a whole other talk. By hiring some DevRel folks for your product, you'll have technical people who can help out your technical users. In an ideal world, that DevRel team will also bring back insights and feedback from users, which can help to improve your product. But all of this usually doesn't happen until after you have a product and those users, 
Otherwise, who are you relating with? So in DevRel, there's some problems that are pretty easily solved, like which events to attend, which sticker manufacturer to use, or which languages to write your tutorials in. But these are some of the hardest problems I've come across in developer relations. How do we build a community of people who care about what we're doing and keep them engaged? How do we get them to give meaningful feedback on our ideas? And how do we build long-term collaborative partnerships with different people and organizations? So when thinking about these hard problems, what if we could get a head start on them? What if we tried to tackle these hard parts first before building the product? If you add developer relations or community roles early on, you could develop your product with its place in the ecosystem already in mind. And while helping that ecosystem and community itself grow and thrive. All while you're collaborating, helping and receiving help from other people in the, in the ecosystem. So if we do this strategy right, in theory, we can start our product on day one with better insights and establish community, open communication lines and potential partnerships all ready to go. That sounds great to me, makes my job a lot easier. So how do we do it? Let's talk about building an open source strategy, which is like a playbook for how your company will engage with the developer ecosystem. When you're building your open source strategy, there's a few questions you can ask yourself. Firstly, how are you supporting the developers and maintainers that are working on open source? Maybe you're sponsoring projects or allowing your engineers time to work on issues. Second, what are you giving or contributing to open source? Are you releasing all of your code? Are you writing posts or white papers or otherwise sharing your knowledge? And finally, how are you communicating with all these other actors in the ecosystem? Are you participating in open discussions or maybe offering up your business use cases? Now, I could go really deep into the ethics of open source, and I know this is a really hot topic today, but I wanna to briefly touch on two principles to think about as you're answering these questions. First, how can you make sure that you're giving before taking? A lot of companies use open source, but very few contribute back in meaningful ways. And the second, how can you support existing solutions before building your own? Now, I don't believe we need one project to rule them all for every use case, but historically, businesses are very bad at building something in-house when they could have funded or contributed to a solution that already exists. So those are things to think about as you're developing your strategy. As an example, let's look at Embark's open source strategy. Our strategy is brief and it's just three parts. The first one, open source by default. This means that for everything new we develop, we consider if or when it can be open sourced. So every time we develop something new that's reusable, not tied to proprietary stuff, and will be maintained for the foreseeable future, we just make it public. The second part is leading the conversation. As I mentioned, we're working in a lot of spaces like open source game dev or the relatively young Rust programming language where there's big problems and no clear answers. We want Embark to drive open conversation and collaboration around these problems and act as a bit of a thought leader. So we do this by building open projects, communities, and actively inviting people to collaborate with us. And the final part of our strategy is strategic support. We give back to developers who are making great things. And we strategically invest in projects and developers that are working towards our goals, either directly or indirectly. This can involve monetary sponsorship of individuals or projects, hiring contract work to work on specific tasks, or allocating our own engineering resources. We strongly believe that companies that professionally use and rely on open source software have a responsibility to support the developers and maintainers of it. Also, our strategy is publicly available. There's a link in the slides that I'll share later, um, but it is on the Embark Studios GitHub. So at developer relations conferences where I can normally be found, there's always at least one talk about how hard it is to measure the impact of DevRel. 
So if it's hard to begin with in normal circumstances, you can only imagine it gets harder when you don't have a product yet. All of your pirate metrics, acquisition, activation, retention, those don't work. We're focused on these really important, but also really qualitative results, like building long-term relationships and collaborations. And these aren't as easy to track on a dashboard as acquisition or retention, but I cannot stress how important they are. So let's give you the results. And I, I could go on and on about how our strategy is great, but I'll let it come from the community. This first image is one of my favorite quotes about us, and it came just after we announced our sponsorship of the Blender Foundation. It reads, Embark Studios is an established supporter of open source software with a blog post extolling the virtues of open source tools and an online portal dedicated to its own open source projects. I was really excited about this because it was only a few months after we started working with open source and already we were getting a lot of recognition. Others use fewer words to express how they feel, like this Reddit user, but nevertheless, they follow every single project we release. And there's lots of people who've told us about how much they appreciate what we're doing in the community. And this has an impact. The biggest theme that I've noticed is how strongly we've been able to build up a reputation in the community. Every time someone utters game dev, along with either Rust or open source in the same sentence, it seems that Embark is always brought up. People are excited to see what we're building in the space. And I am so excited to show them sometime soon. So summarizing the results, we've got this company image as a recommended em employer for Rust engineers. We've been able to hire great talent from the open source community. And we wanna build our workforce out of these great open source engineers. We've also got this brand association with game dev, open source and Rust and people actively watching what we're releasing. We also have an understanding about the landscape from actually being in it. So those hard problems that I mentioned earlier about building community and feedback loops or finding long-term partnerships, those seem a lot less hard now. And when we do release something, we are set up to succeed because we've already established those links into the rest of the ecosystem. So to wrap up, you and I, along with your company, my company, and countless foundations, organizations, projects, and individuals are all part of an ecosystem. And if you want your product to thrive in that ecosystem, you need to understand how you fit into the greater landscape. And if you're like me and you haven't yet released your product, my advice to you is to put that strategy first. Don't make open source an afterthought. Don't silo yourself when millions of developers are already working together on any problem you can imagine. Grow your product inside the developer ecosystem and you can help not only your product, but the ecosystem as a whole thrive. Let's all innovate, build and thrive together. Thank you.